uh, uh, this will be should be a uh, uh, nice conversation. Uh, our guest tonight it is uh, the director of this film that you uh, uh, watched tonight, uh, Roman Brani, and he came uh, from uh, Budapest uh, uh, for this conversation Q and A. Yeah, yeah. Also he, uh, which is very happy. <laughs> yes. Uh, my name is uh, Marek Demiri. Uh, maybe someone knows me, uh, or someone not. Uh, doesn't matter. And I have uh, prepared some uh, uh, question for our friend. Uh, uh, but this is very important for me because I'm stuttering. So uh, when I hold something in my hand. It is easier for me to speak, so that's it. Uh, okay, I have prepared some questions for you, and I I will start with the boring one. Uh, how you succeed in making uh, this film? You know, uh, 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 but what uh, uh, motivates you, and uh, uh, how you? Uh, usually get your inspiration. How you shape your your usually or about this movie? Because usually oh, this movie. Oh. Yes. Um, uh, I was living abroad for my in my when I was young. From from my from when I was twenty to thirty, I haven't lived in Hungary. I've been in other countries. So probably I had a subconsciously I had a. We don't need to translate it in, in, in the online. I hope not. Um, 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 probably that subconsciously in my brain, but I was sitting in, when I lived in, when I'm living in Budapest, there was so many black guys passing by and I just, I was thinking like, what the hell are they doing in Hungary? And I started to sit down with them like, and giving them questions and I, and basically, it was a curiosity. What's the what's the Hungary, what's the black guys doing in Hungary? That was the only starting point of this movie. And and when I had a few interviews and talking with them, we wrote a comedy. After that, with my co-writer Ivan, he and me, we wrote a comedy about three black guys selling batteries and all sorts of little things in the middle of Budapest in called Blah Louisa there. It's a square. And uh, and then uh, and then it turned to serious when we got to know the refugees or migrants or all the different nations in Budapest and that became like this. Okay. Uh, 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 oh, but recently I read some some uh, some interviews of yours. Uh, I read old one uh, from 2006 where you uh, makes a difference between uh, uh, commercial films and feature films. And uh, you uh, the second one you called uh, as a, uh, a film for brain uh, brain films that uh, helps the brain or or that uh, engage more uh, the brain of all the humans uh, what makes one film uh, uh, to be feature films a uh, uh, film or brain film um, I mean when you're not when you're not making making movie for selling tickets I mean, unfortunately, that's the that's the point. You know, when you when you when you have a when you have a when they forcing you to sell your movie more and more and more and more tickets, then you have to use panels, which is very predictable usually and doesn't give any questions. It's basically entertaining people, which has a right to be exist. You know, I mean, no problem with that. There is commercial movies and there are movies which giving you questions or try to giving you answer or just whatever they do 
And that's what it separates the two, the two things, I think. If either you want to make a successful financial, financially successful movie, or there's two markets, thanks God, and then that's what I'm doing now. Okay, so you're struggling with capitalism. And, uh, okay, uh, uh, the third question is, uh, 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 your last films, uh, uh, transmission and and citizen uh, have a, a, a social content and uh, and I think uh, 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 what do you think uh, is the film uh, media that can change uh, the society uh, uh, the reality of of, of the of the society, uh, politics, uh, history, and build up a new kind of uh, of uh, political and social paradigm. Um, <clears throat> I have no idea, but I remember. I remember movies was forming my view of life. I remember that when I started to when I started to go to movie theaters when I was like 16 or 15 or 14 by myself. I remember how much I got from it. I have no idea what's going on now, but I'm traveling with this movie all around the world now with big giant theaters with so many, so many countries, and I see influence on those audiences. And and if it's if it's really affecting, I mean, if you withdraw the, if you withdraw movies and books and culture out from society. It would be a very, very, very weird place. So I guess it does. But it, but I I don't know if if for example I made this movie. If so many people was thinking about in my country, like what does it mean to be a foreigner or what does it mean to become Hungarian? You know, probably it did something. I couldn't measure it and I cannot measure it. So I cannot give you a straight answer. I hope it's gives question to people to answer or or some feeling to people to answer okay uh, your film is funded by the state uh, foundation or or the state money uh, and the state is funding a film that is confronting uh, uh, present and uh, dominant uh, political, uh, historical, social structures, uh, which are very uh, uh, root uh, for the otherness. Uh, so, uh, so, <laughs> so how come? Nobody knows. Nobody. Uh, oh, so I guess I I'll let you know what I mean. Your question is my how come my government. We all know, I guess, my government is against migra migration in a very extreme way, even a very stupid way. So it's like that's how they won the election. Uh, they were demonizing migrants. But in the same time, they have a few rights also with their opinion. But, but whatever, they were really demonizing the people who's coming to tr try to come to Europe. And, but they have other, other opinion which I don't, which I don't agree. I mean, I don't agree with my government at all. But we have Andrew Wojna. Andrew Wojna is the producer of Terminator, the Rocky movies, if you remember. Yeah. He's a big Hollywood star, has been before. He moved home when, when the Fidesz, my government, came on power eight years ago. He got the film, film fund. He, he became a chief of the Hungarian film fund. They rebuilt the system, which is actually not so bad. And uh, and um, and uh, we, all the directors who has been making made movies before, and now we could keep going making movies freely. It's just proved this movie proving we could speak freely, which is actually I don't in Hungary it's very hard subject now because. The guy, the government going. It's like your the, the the Hungarian government. It's like your government, which is failed in 
two years ago or something, which was in power in ten years, right? So it's but a, yes, but the structures uh, it's a remain. Right, yes. It's a right-wing populist. That's what it is, basically, purely. And uh, <clears throat> and somehow this American Hungarian guy called Andrew Weiner create the this film fund which is not touched by the politics. If it would have been touched by the politics, this movie and so many others would have been made. And we never ever could figure out what it is exactly because my government's Hanna goes everywhere and try to control media, try to control everything. But somehow we keep working freely. And Either we are too loud and too dangerous and we're winning Oscars and Berlin Alleys and if we got angry, that's very dangerous. <laughs> or they don't give a shit. Or this guy, Andrew Weiner, he's American basically, a 56 revolutionaries, knows what is free speech and politicians. You know, he knows what it is, it's in his, his blood and he's protecting the whole thing. I never gave this question to this film fund or nobody, but there has been made by Holocaust movies, there has been made gay movies, immigration, immigration movies, gypsy movies, everything has been made freely with free speech, but we still cannot know how come there is no any re reaction coming from the government. It's just, it's, it's a lucky situation, probably at some point they're going to say, they're going to say like, no way, that's <coughs> filmmakers stop speaking, who knows. Uh, but no, I, I couldn't feel, I couldn't see any control by the government of the Hungarian Film Fund, which is a miracle. Okay. Uh, I finished with my, uh, with my questions, so I... Uh, if anyone from the audience have uh, any question or uh, comment, yes. do that early. Yes, it's just a question. Uh, also very boring. Oh, last last okay. So I'm Susan. Okay. Yeah. Very boring. First, where did you study film school? Um, I was in the Hungarian film academy. Me. But I didn't study there. We have a studio there, and then we made him making movies there in the 90s. But I didn't make it to the film school. I, I didn't want to. Yeah, just a two year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, when did you start making movies? There or? I don't know. Long ago. Um, I, this is my fourth feature, and I'm at, I had so many short films. I don't remember it. I started making movies, I think, when I, it was like in 85 or something with the Super 8 camera. If you want to really, if you, if you want to really know when I got financed my first movie, that was in, that was in Balazs Bela studio in, in 17 years ago. Last question. Uh, <laughs> Just think about it. Oh, yeah. Are you happy with this kind of world life that is not so... Say it again? Are you happy with this kind of indie way of life, making movies only for yourself? Uh, <clears throat> uh, if I would make it only for myself, I wouldn't be happy. But, like, this movie, this is this... I don't know how many, it's went around the whole world, it's released in New York in a couple of weeks from now, in America, you know, it won 17 prizes and the movie theaters was full in Hungary. And it's still on, after one and a half years it's still on, in one movie theater of course, but it goes on in Budapest. So, if I would do movie, indie movie for myself, I would be very sad and I would stop it. So you need to have a... Uh, surface where you can project what you want to say so yeah, yeah that's that's a big difference so i want us i want people to see it you know if i if nobody's gonna see it i'm gonna stop it okay you're a very good customer in this movie so yeah i want to ask about the actor in the video role he was uh real actor um 
So the three main actors we talk about: the black guy, the, uh, Wilson, and Shirin, and 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 uh, and Maria. Maria is a professional one. The black guy, she's a. Uh, he came to Hungary 30 years ago. He became an economist. He was studying economist in the coming time, and then 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 he he lost his jobs and he became a tram driver in 95 so the last 20 years he's driving driving trams and and also he's in the center and 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 responsible for the whole tram traffic thing and then she also uh, shirin she's uh she came to study to hungary eight years ago or seven or ten or i don't remember exactly and i find him on the street that there's uh, you know it's i just run after him and I saw him pass by, and then my wife just said, I was sitting in a coffee, and she said, don't you think he's good for the... And then I said, mm, yeah, I was hesitating. I was bald, and I had my hoodie on, my great hoodie and sneakers and jeans and stuff, so I looked like a little bit skinheadish. And, um, and I ran after him. He was very far, so I was running hard to catch him, and I was breathing hard. And, uh, and I started to talk to him but like hey I wanna have a, I would like to talk to you about the feature of him and he was like what <laughs> and then I was begging the phone number of him and then uh, then I get it and then then we started to do the rehearsals he, I convinced him to try to do the rehearsals and it was very bad it was so bad I never seen such a bad acting like that before and then I got Shirin, the Iranian girl, and she was also very bad. And then, then I, I couldn't find a key for so long. I was working with them before the movie for a year, or even more than a year. And I, it was so hard to find a key for them to act. And, and I, gave, I put them into the improvis improvisation um, workshop, and I tried all. And they became better and better and better, but not really good. They wanted to the decision makers wanted to actually exchange, just kick them out and bring French professionals to try. And then I said, no way, I mean, how can the French professional study the whole script in Hungarian and make mistakes? So there was no solution for that. So we, we reached a, the certain level, which I was not so satisfied, but it was at least not so bad. And then in the first day of the shooting, he, the guy just switched. And he knew there's no more chance, he has to put himself onto the table, there's no more acting. He has to bring himself, and in that moment he was perfect. And it's happened with the Iranian girl, and I have to instruct the professionals all the time. I, did, I couldn't even, I didn't need to say anything. I mean, it's not true, it's over-exaggeration, but, uh, but that's how it happened. So I worked one year for him on, on him. I got gray hair. It was like so much trust, and then and, um, and he became perfect. And he won like you know in Los Angeles best acting and uh, in Tokyo best acting. Another question was about your work with It's very hard to work with him. He's a, um, I, were, I was in the AD of the Werkmeister Harmony, and, um, and he's a maniac, he's a maniac, he's a monomaniac, he's a, a, I have so much uh, respect for his work, but I, I wouldn't work with him ever, <laughs> and, um, and he's, um, he's from the generate. You know, Hungarian movie was always very supported by the whatever government is, and very successful. And the giant industry we have now, crazy industry uh, in in Hungary. For all the American blockbusters has been shot in the, in, in Hungary. So he's coming from the generation when he 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 could allow for himself anything, basically almost anything. And he's, uh, he, he had such a crazy scenes and ideas, but he can push through. And it was very original and very honest things what he did, and very smart or very whatever you call it. But that kind of filmmaking is over, I think. You know, it's like we've been throwing like millions of millions of dollars out on the window to, 
got that right moment, you know, you can do that. That's, that's how it worked. It was very hard. Everybody worked their ass off. We couldn't have food. It was dark and cold and crazy. But uh, one of the best experiences in my life, but that's the last, last experience. <laughs> he works, he's got a vision to understand, just makes you, if you are interested about his, his work method, he's got a vision of the scene, which is usually a, like five minutes scene or 12 minutes scene. Even he got a special cassette for the 35 camera because the role couldn't fit in because it's a 12, it was a 12 minutes. Uh, scene, so they had to in the Germany. In Ariflex made him a special one, and also the special role in Babelsberg. The Kodak made him a special one, uh, 12, 12 minutes uh, role, and then <clears throat> and then he got the vision, and we were rehearsing it for a day. Just got the return, get all the stuff, and then he started to shoot it for a couple of times, or three times, or four times, or five times, and it's all went to the garbage. That was the best. Seen on the Mr. Harmony, and it went to the garbage. I was crying for him, please don't do that, because there was a little flare. What we should have fixed it, but he didn't. He said it's not on the material. We have to do it again. So that's how it works. I have so much respect for that guy, but I have a bad relationship with him. <laughs> okay. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Real. Uh, uh, in the last year we had a lot of film festival in other city and your colleague uh, Mandrushko won the main prize also for Jupiter's Moon. I had a pleasure to talk with the cinematographer Marcel, Marcel Red and he maybe had some feeling that the Hungarian artist musician, filmmakers need to get the monkey off their backs about presenting Hungary in some warm light because of this, you know, xenophobic uh, populist uh, stance. So, do you feel like uh, your artistic commun community need to present Hungary in some, let's say, warm humanist uh, light? And that's why there is a, like Jupiter's Moon, The Citizen, and a couple, three, four short movies that I saw also in Manhattan. <clears throat> One way, yes, but you know, I was, as I told you, I was traveling all around the world with this movie, and I don't think so. Hungary is different. Mm -hmm. it, maybe Orban is louder a little bit about this thing, but the whole world is reacting for this crisis in the same way. You know, either somebody is actually the West is very high hypocrites. They acting like open, warm, come, everybody comes, but they don't like it, you know, I mean, that's, so, yes, of course, I want to show, you know, I don't think so, Macedonian people, or Hungarian people, or Austrian people are different, you know, if you need to help for a Syrian family who is getting to froze to death in the winter, I think Macedonian people or Scandinavian people would help, that's the human nature, what the government projecting or what the government's populist government's try to speech that's another thing but also the problem of migration is it's not pronounced by Orban Viktor I don't want to protect that guy that's the last things what I want but in the same time when they try to attack them because he will build a fence you know Orban Viktor doesn't found it fence the Chinese wall has been built for, I don't know, in, in I don't know how many thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago, or Israel surrounded six meter high beton walls with themselves in, in the end of the 90s or the beginning of 2000s. Bulgaria was building crazy fans. Turkey, I mean, you know, I mean, so what I want to tell you is like, like now Orban is the spot of the anti-migrant uh, populist guy but at the same time the problem what he's pronouncing is a very important problem you know thousands of thousands of people under the under the Mediterranean not, not actually not, not, not thousands there is 50,000 people minimum who we know dead person under the Mediterranean Sea you know, there's so many problems with this question, which is actually unsolvable, or, or I don't know how to solve it. So, 
so I, I don't, I think it's a European problem. Probably Hungarians are louder now, but it's a very, very European problem what to do with these people. And actually, I don't know what to do with these people because these people forced to come to Europe, you know, and to do who knows what, you know, you know, the home is burning, whatever it is. Just a follow-up short question, and you can, you can, the, your answer is very visually presented in your movie. You know, the guy who wo works in the butcher shop, he is the representative of that people that we talk, the Macedonian who look at the guy that you froze to death, or the Scandinavians, and you, you can see very clear visually the duality between the repressive apparatus and the technocrats working in the immigration office, and the people like uh, Mari or the guy in the butcher shop. They are the epitome of human world touch. Exactly. And what is the... Uh, okay, but there was a... Girl? Say it again. What is the Iranian girl? What do you mean, what is... In this country huh? that he is talking. You mean like... These people are like we? Mm -hmm. You mean what's the what's the position in the movie in the Iranian girl? It's the same thing. I mean, ir the Iranian girl. So what, what she represents? What she represents? Oh, that's 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 clear. Then. She was representing the when I was writing the script. Um, I know the woman's situation in Middle East and mainly Middle East. You know, I've been a lot in Middle East, and and and. The women rights there is just doesn't exist basically, you know. If I wanna be too harsh on those societies, it's not really true, but they have a very hard life. And if you wanna have a baby without a husband, it makes you impossible. You're risking your life or you're risking your the baby's life, but socially definitely they make you impossible. And um, <clears throat> and there are so many women and girls who are running away from those societies to try to have free love or free work or just have a right to vote or have a right, a right to exist. And that's the, that's the representation of Sharon. Okay. First situation in Hungary and connection with the, with the main character. Say it again. Uh, I know why she moved from yeah. Iran. For example, mm -hmm. but uh, the way she's attached to him, the guy, yeah, yeah to the main actor. Oh, what would you, what uh, are you trying to say with that? Because to me, he was, like, he, the, exactly. Someone said it now. She didn't have so many choice. She was, she's been already. But she, uh, yes, she doesn't have a choice. But she made him not to have a choice himself. Either. Exactly. She gave up birth there immediately and he became the grandfather of his children, basically. You know, I mean that's that's what it is. That's how the whole reality works there also. You know, all these illegal or legal refugees try to help each other. They get the addresses and they get the phone number. You can work there, you can stay there, you can have a, you can you can go to all sorts of organization, you know, and that's how they find them. And when she gave the bird there, you know, she just chose he's gonna be the grandfather of his children. You know? I mean when you give a bird by herself, by yourself in Hungary, within a situation when they wanna deport just send you back to your country, you just grab any opportunities for stability or some, some safety nest. And that's what she does, you know. She doesn't care anymore anything, protect the child and try to be Hungarian also, you know. And that's the, that's the point, if he would have married to her, if he became a Hungarian citizen, if he would have married to her, she's safe basically. She's just grabbing the guy for, for, for safety. Because I think that's, I mean, I have two children and I also grabbing opportunities for safety. Of course, we all do, we all need to survive. But uh, she made him not to have a choice himself. Uh, yes, you're right. You're right. I mean, she, yeah, he, he could have, he could have kicked him out. He could have kicked him out. You know, he could have just sent him away with the baby. He sent her away with the baby. He didn't. 
Uh, that's that's another view. Yeah, that's that's another level. No, but he should have said like bye, you know. But he didn't. He didn't because of solidarity of the refugees. That's very important. They saw solidarity for a certain level. Okay. Uh, I guess it's human nature. Being Human nature of what? No, I'm just trying to. It's survival. It's not human nature. Human no. nature of the main character, the guy that he needs ah, to help. He, he, Don't okay. have a choice here. I thought, he to thought that he's talking about her. But let me, let me go with my question. Uh, it's about Maria. And uh, her last name, uh, I didn't catch. Uh, yes. her name. That's a Serbian. She's a Serbian lady. Can, uh, can you. Uh, Say something more about that, uh, the choosing of the... The names? And then, so, okay, the, the nationality. Uh, she's Hungarian. She, we have Petrovic. Uh, is it Petrovic, right? Yeah, something um, like that. Yeah. Petrovic yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Petrovic is when you pick up your husband name. Herceg Maria, it's her own name, right? So he, she was... So the guy... Uh, the guy is Petrovic, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, we have so many Serbians and Petrovic and which which in Hungary, especially in, in the south, south, uh, east part of Budapest and also in the south. So there was not really... But, uh, I'm, okay, I, I don't want to go deeper, but I will just one step deeper. Uh, you said that Maria is Serbian. I mean, you're, you're the screen player. Uh -huh. I didn't choose his gut Serbian for that. It's a common name, unfortunately. But it's a very good, good you. I can use that. But uh, but I didn't pick her. As... Sounds they were like. But it's a very good idea, actually. I never, I never think about it. But no, no, no. I just picked the name Petrovic. It's not because of the, but because it's Serbian. But now I'm gonna say it. I did it on purpose. So. <laughs> Okay, are there any questions? I invite you to ask some questions or, or to have a comment. No. No. <laughs> so actually you are right, in a one way he, he didn't have a chance. You know, he, she put him into the situation. Yeah, yeah, she. That's uh, that's. But but moms with a little baby in such a very hard situation should be like that. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but for him, it wasn't maybe a tough choice. Maybe it was it presented like that. But uh, he struggling, with killing of his wife. He know what uh, he can be and play practically one hundred percent in her skin. So. That solidarity can be maybe just between the people who are coming in Hungary exactly. and refugees. Yeah. Mali failed the solidarity test. That's, but, it. that's but exactly. It's not a so hard choice because he knows how, how it is. I don't have any uh, questions about his choice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you think that Hungary is responsible for the situation? Okay, okay, okay. What do you think? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> uh, so basically, I shot the scene. The Hungarian government, actually, the actually in Europe, it's the same thing. But in Hungary, I know that you get this very short. Even when you go through go through this process, right? You pick, you just do the exam. Everything is fine. The government usually just send you the letter, like. You didn't get the citizenship. You don't have the rights with the lawyer to go against it. You have to try again. That's what you usually get from thousand people 
maybe one, maybe 10,000 to one Uganda citizenship. Mm -hmm. So that's a very, very, very unfair way to treat people. And, uh, and I, shot, I, I, I shot the movie like that, you could read the letter. He didn't get the citizenship actually, you could read the letter. But, uh, but in the same time, when I was editing the movie, I thought there are so many things getting on his head. So I left this question open, which was a mistake, because this movie doesn't communicate that way, so I don't like it, but that's, that's what it is. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, no, 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 he didn't. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. Nobody gets it. Very few people get it. It's like all over in Europe. It's very important that. Yeah, which is the same thing. So it's very important to say it's like. It wasn't about Hungary. I think all the refugees and all the migrants has the same problem all over in Europe now. Maybe West has a better infrastructure about refugees because of the history. I mean, but the rest is like the ah, it's the same problem in Macedonia and in Austria and everywhere. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much.